Most of the time I just tease him about the color choices of his apparel. The fashion sense. Right, so what colors are you wearing now, John? Um, so I'm wearing my favorite brown shirt. <laughs> so the idea for this story came about when my colleague, John DeSoto, here's John, came to work wearing a salmon pinkish shirt, this shirt. And I commented that it was an interesting color in him, and he said, Oh really? I wouldn't know. I'm colorblind. Surprised by this, I asked him if he ever tried those corrective glasses ever. And he said, no, they're just kind of expensive. So naturally, I decided to do a story about this and set out on a mission to get John these glasses. And just when I was researching how to go about this, we learned of a partnership between Arizona State Museum and Enchroma, the company whose co-founder, Don McPherson, was the one who actually invented the lenses designed to address the symptoms of colorblindness. So it was all just kind of meant to be. This partnership is part of Enchroma's Color Accessibility Program, where they donate glasses to organizations like schools, libraries, and parks, so that people with color blindness can experience those spaces in more vivid color. In my life, I've not run across that many people that really seem to be interested at all. When it came to colors, I'd just back off and not say anything. So I'm a student here, and I'm studying uh, archaeology. And that's a lot of where I hope that these glasses will help help things be easier for me. Oh, these glasses, I think, <laughs> are gonna open my eyes to what I've been missing low these many years. On this day, four colorblind individuals were invited to the museum where a press conference was held to witness their first experiences with the glasses. The biggest thing is it's embarrassing because I can't match clothes up well. My wife really gets on me about that. Like John, one thing they all have in common is having trouble getting dressed. I, my wife always had to dress me because of a wrong color tie, wrong color shirt, wrong color pants. Apparently I'm a moderate, moderate dresser. I've never had, with the exception of some purple socks that my kids made me buy. Or it hasn't ever prevented me from actually doing something. Just in my profession, the only thing that it's hindered is when it comes to color grading footage. Um, I'm probably not the best person for that job. And it hasn't ever really hindered their lives or professions in any significant way. I was an audio recording engineer, so being colorblind was not a big deal. I was a pharmacist, because then you just went by identification, the, the markings on them and the size and all that. I was a university professor for about half of my career and a working engineer. I've never struggled over it. And their color blindness seems more interesting to those with normal color vision, perhaps because they don't know what they've actually been missing, and we can't imagine a world without the full spectrum. For low these many decades, it's not a big deal to me any longer. So I don't actually know maybe how bad <laughs> it is for me. But it's gonna be interesting to find out. <laughs> so what is color blindness? First of all, the biggest misconception is that colorblind people see the world in only shades of gray, black, and white. This is called a chromatopsia, and it's extremely rare, affecting only one in approximately 30,000 people. Whereas the most common types, which is red-green colorblindness, affects approximately 300 million people worldwide. And maybe you're wondering why all the colorblind people in this story are male. That's because it's a sex-linked genetic mutation that is passed on the X chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes, so if a female inherits one normal X chromosome and one with the mutation, she won't display the mutation since it's a recessive gene. Males are more likely to be colorblind since they don't have a second X chromosome to override the chromosome that carries the mutation. And this is why 95% of colorblind people are male. Physiologically, colorblindness happens when a type of nerve in the retina, called a cone, isn't working correctly. These cones are what processes light as it enters our eyes and sends signals to the brain that allow us to perceive color. And there are three types of cone cells, and each has a different sensitivity to blues, greens, and reds. Typical color vision involves the slight overlapping of these three cones, and this enables us to detect up to one million different shades of color. Color blindness happens when these cones overlap more than normal, and this causes confusion between specific colors. The more overlapping of these cones, the more color confusion it creates. And there are different types and intensities of color blindness. One way to find out what type of color blindness you have is to take an online test, as John is seen doing here. 
and this allows Enchroma to determine what type of color blindness you have and what lenses will be most effective. No, nothing. Nope. Three. <laughs> nothing. So how do the glasses work? By using advanced spectral notch filters, Enchroma glasses selectively filters out wavelengths of light at the point where confusion or excessive overlap of color sensitivity occurs. Upwards of 80% of people affected by these types see an improvement, allowing them to perceive more colors in bright and vivid detail. Oh dear, well, <laughs> that's way different. These two? Without the glasses and these two, you know, they're, they're pretty much equal in brightness, intensity, and in color, and, and saturation kind of thing, you know. But now, they're way different. <laughs> well, what I can see better is each individual piece I can, I can pick apart. Our wall of baskets. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those are something. Wow, look at that. Enchroma makes glasses for both indoor and outdoor settings, and when the four participants went outside, they experienced a much more dramatic difference. Wait, are these, are these trials red? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's red, all right. <laughs> it's red brick, but it's... <laughs> Here, you want next? Yeah, let me... Let me yeah. And for John's big moment, I brought him to the most colorful place I could think of, the Tucson Botanical Gardens, we where we were joined by his wife Go and straight. daughter. I expect to see more vividness in uh, sort of greens and reds, since those are the two main colors that affect the type of colorblindness. Once we did do, like, the color tests, it was phenomenal to kind of notice... We all see seven. You don't see the number seven? I don't I guess I, I don't know what to expect. This is exciting. <laughs> Ooh. Seriously? Oh my gosh. That's weird. <laughs> That's purple. It's, uh, those are definitely red. Mm -hmm. but those. That's definitely red. Oh, like the contrast in the red and green is like super significant. Wow. <sighs> Look at your shirt. It's green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, For dang. Sure? That's green. What did you think it was before? brown. <laughs> oh, that is weird. <laughs> oh, how green, green the vines are. Those are very green. I'm left wondering why it's so moving to witness someone with color blindness oh. using these glasses. I think because it's so sad to think of the world any less vibrant. But this is subjective. There are in fact many, many more colors that people with normal color vision can't see, like infrared and ultraviolet. And it's impossible to even imagine what they look like, because we lack the visual literacy to articulate them. But perhaps one day, the technology will exist that will allow us to see how much richer and vaster the world and cosmos actually is. That's red. 